Hey guys, Brian Davis here from Spark Rental. Super glad to be with you today. And I am so excited to have Jenny Gu with us from Vertical Street Ventures. Jenny is the managing partner over there at Vertical Street Ventures, which is a real estate syndicator sponsor. Uh, she also leads the VSV Academy, which trains people how to become commercial real estate syndicators themselves. And she was able to ditch her corporate day job in less than three years after buying her first real estate investment. So yeah, it's right up my alley. I love that stuff. So Jenny, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh my gosh, Brian. Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure to be here today. Absolutely. So I always like to start when we have guests by just rewinding the clock to the very beginning, you know, how you did your first real estate investment deal, what went wrong, <laughs> you know, what went right, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, let's rewind the clock and, you know, tell us about your first deal. Absolutely. So like many other investors out there, I know, we actually started with single family rentals first. So traditional yep. long-term rental, single family homes in the Midwest. We lived in Cincinnati at that time. So we bought our first property in 2017. And by 2019, we were up to 10. Mm. So we quickly ramped up on the single family side. And I don't know why it took us all the way to 10, but at some point in there, we should have thought, okay, there's gotta be a way to grow faster and scale larger versus going single door by door, you know, over time. And so that's when I learned about multifamily. And we believed in the model so much so that I left my corporate job at Procter & Gamble in early 2020, before I even purchased a single multifamily door. That's how much we believed in it. Wow. And burned the bridges and pursued multifamily full time since 2020. So single family allowed me to retire. Um, and replace most of my salary. Meanwhile, my husband still worked full time at the company as you know, the backup and you know, the insurance and all that good stuff. I know how that goes. My wife, my wife works full time too. Yeah, exactly. So we, we planned it that way so that I could focus 100% of my time and dive deep into multifamily. Well, I love that. We covered a ton of ground there. <laughs> so I, I want to zoom in a little bit on some of the things you just said, because we went from Bought my first property to yeah. having 10 properties to retiring <laughs> in, yep. in three years. So in 2017, you're living in Cincinnati. Tell us about that first property and you know how you found it uh, and, and you know what, what happened. Yeah, my husband does CrossFit. And so it just so happened. And I'm, I'm a firm believer and you just meet the right people at the right time, like magical things happen. So in his CrossFit gym, he had a, a buddy who was also looking into real estate and they got to talking and we said, hey, we are so invested. All of our retirement was at Procter & Gamble. And we wanted to diversify as we should. And so he said, hey, meet my friend Bonnie, who also comes to the gym. She happened to be a realtor and a property manager. Okay. And so we got to talking to her and she said, look, I can find you a good single family homes. And mind you, in the mess, I, I live in SoCal now. And so prices do not apply here. Right. But in the Midwest, you know, we bought our first home for less than $100,000. And if you apply that 1% rule, so if you can get, you know, $1,000 of rent per $100,000 property value, then that's the minimum threshold you'd like to see. We were seeing that left and right in Cincinnati. And so we scooped up the first home for less than 100,000. You know, now it's appreciated. And we're getting more than $1,000 of rent, which is phenomenal. But that first deal was scary, of course, because it was our first rental. We didn't know what we were doing necessarily. We had our own home. That's different when it's an investment property. But we just, you know, we had trusted the right person who found us a good deal. And she was also the property manager. And we just worked out a good system um, to make sure we felt good about the deal, found the right lender. And when we signed, the day we signed on the loan, we said, gosh, that actually wasn't too bad. Um, and then nine homes later, you know, there was one day we actually closed on four homes on one day. Wow. Believe it or not. And I think that the lesson here is as long as you have the right people in the right place, then they can make things happen for you. And we were just so fortunate to have met Bonnie um, because she has been phenomenal in helping us find good single family homes and managing it for us. You know, my co-founder, Denny Supli and I, who I normally co-host this show with, we talk all the time about how real estate investing is a team sport. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, is, it is not a solo sport. You need a good team around you, you know, from real estate agents to appraisers and lenders and inspectors and, you know, tens of contractors, oh, <laughs> and yeah. dozens of contractors. Uh, so how did you scale upward from there? You know, you mentioned buying four properties in one day at one point. Yeah. Uh, so walk us through how you went from there, that one property under 100000 to scaling up your, your portfolio of single family rentals. 
Yeah. And so, you know, capital wise, we had both been working full time. So we had, you know, our, our nest egg of savings that we used to purchase the first few homes. And mind you, a hundred thousand dollar home, you're putting in, you know, 15 to 20,000 plus some cushion to do some renovations and sure. you know all that fun stuff. So call it, you know, $25,000 per hundred thousand dollar home. Um, so we had some savings saved up. We learned this as we go. And so we also learned that we could borrow against our retirement fund to invest in something like real estate. So then we each pulled out, you know, call another 50 grand each, right, to purchase more homes. And so that just started to snowball. And over the course of the two years and between us saving as much as we could, that's how we were able to accumulate. Some homes were, you know, 120 grand and some homes we bought one for 80 grand. And so it just depended on the gem that we were able to find at that time. But capital wise, guys, you, there's so many creative ways that you can find capital out there, or you can take, you can refinance a house um, that you live in, or you can do a HELOC or, you know, get a short term loan. So as strapped as some folks may think they are, they just need to get a little bit creative on where they can find capital. Now, mind you, interest rates aren't phenomenal right, right now, but everyone I talk to today will tell you, you know, and I agree, like humans, we have short memories and we forget that 20 years ago, interest rates were, you know, 10 plus percent for a very long time. And people, you know, yes, it's six, seven, eight percent now, but buy it if it's a good, if the numbers work and then refinance because it's a cycle. Things will just go up and down. Um, so you just have to remember that and, and not get so spooked about interest rates. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, one of the things that we talk about all the time is building out a, a what we call a financing toolkit. You know, if, if we're going to be super nerdy about it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but, it. you know, you do you want all of these sorts of financing options available to you you know, things like HELOCs, like you mentioned. And in fact, you can take out HELOCs on your rental properties, for example, mm -hmm. you can pull out loans from your 401k, you know, if you have a 401k, um, you know, you can open as a real estate investor, you qualify to open business lines of credit, unsecured business lines of credit and business credit cards. Mm -hmm. um, and in some cases with, you know, that 12, 18 month, 0% APR introductory period. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have a year and a half to pay it off. Um, you know, if you put a down payment on that credit card or whatever. Right. Um, yeah, there's, there are plenty of ways to get creative with financing. And if the deal makes sense, then you'll figure out the money portion of it is, is what I've always exactly. found. With exactly. So 10 single family rental properties, and you were able to uh, use that cash flow to replace your salary, your corporate salary. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, my, and I'm happy to share, I, you know, corporate America, 13 years, I was making a good six figure salary, you know, with all the benefits and all of that stuff. Sure. And, you know, let's take, let's do the quick math, right? So one single family home, let's say you cash flow, you know, 300 bucks a month and you have 10, so call it that's three grand a month, right? And that, so that offset a portion of my full-time salary, monthly salary, right? And I said, you know, Ronnie, you'll stay, working you you keep working honey yeah, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> and um so we were able to rely on him for our day-to-day -day expenses right and so when you think about that the the decline in my income if you will we were okay with because now a hundred percent of my time could be focused on something new that could help me generate more than the difference of what I was losing from walking away from my job. So it's just, you have to consider the opportunity cost and the potential that you could gain if you were to focus 100% of your time. Makes total sense to me. Uh, that is exactly what my wife and I have done. Um, maybe not exactly, <laughs> but yeah, yeah totally. she she has a, a stable salary job with outstanding benefits. Uh, I'm obviously an entrepreneur, <laughs> which, which has no floor, but it also has no ceiling. Right. Uh, so, you know, we, we can live on on her salary and benefits and frees us up to pursue some of these higher risk, but potentially much higher return investments from including the business and also, you know, real estate investments. Yeah. But so. also at the same time, I don't want to paint just a, a rainbows and unicorn picture no. either because especially in today's economy, we're definitely seeing a lot of turmoil in some markets. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll even add to that color the the benefit of going to multifamily. So a lot of people ask me, Jenny, knowing what you know now, would you have started with single families or would you jump straight into multifamily? So as much as I, we still have our single families, as much as I love them, they cash flow. Knowing what I know now, I would absolutely start with multifamily because it's actually 
less risky in terms of vacancy and economies of scale is so much better. So, you know, if you're, you know, if you're empty on one house until you rent it out, you're a hundred percent on the hook for the mortgage was, right. you know, a multifamily building, you could be 50% vacant and still break even for the month. Right. So there's definitely economies of scale there. And, you know, fortunately we haven't had a ton of issues with our residents um, in our properties. We have maybe one or two that have come behind and had to go through the whole process, but there's just a little bit more headache with single family that we've experienced versus multifamily. Yeah, I uh, I can relate to that. I I sold off all of my single family rentals because I didn't want those headaches anymore. But yeah. that's how I came up as well was with with single family rental properties. I had a ton of landlording headaches. I never want to be a landlord again. But a lot of passive real estate investments in multifamily properties today, and I don't have to lift a finger. I don't have right. to take any of those three AM phone calls. But even you yourself, as someone who owns some of those, you know, maybe in their entirety. You can have a professional property manager step in there, maybe even live on the premises and take all of those headaches as opposed to with single family rentals. I found that I had to manage the manager almost as much as I had to manage the tenants if I were just managing the properties myself. So, you know, you, you make an excellent point about the economy of scale there with multifamily, including with bringing in more professional property managers. Yeah. And that's key because they're the very important part of your team, the property manager. They will make or break your deal. <laughs> um, and yeah, we hire a third party manager. I mean, you don't want me fixing your toilets or doing anything right. else <laughs> by any means. So we hire somebody to manage the day to day and do all that work for us. But yeah, you're still, you know, on the active side because we are the lead sponsors, we still manage the manager. Um, but it's a professional, you know, company that should know what they're doing. You're just making sure they execute the business plan. But as a, passive investor that yeah to your point Brian like you don't lift a finger you benefit from the you know cash flow that comes in every month or every quarter um, and that's the benefit of being a passive investor so Jenny I want to talk some about vertical street ventures that you are doing right now as a as a sponsor as a real estate syndicator uh, so uh, yeah let's start at the beginning and just you know talk about yeah. how that you know how that started and then what you guys are working on now Sure. Yeah. So the company, you know, how I actually accelerated in multifamily, I found a mentor first and we just happened to meet at one of these meetups, which I highly encourage everybody to do or continue doing is go to conferences, meetups, meet people. Um, I found somebody who happened to be speaking there at that time and connected with him and said, look, I just quit my job. I have time and skill sets to help you manage your properties essentially like, can I just intern for you? I'll do it for free. Just teach me what you know. And that's how, you know, I was able to accelerate so quickly. Um, and this was early 2020. Um, now he and I co-founded Vertical Street Ventures um, and we've built a team. We have four partners on the business now and collectively we have about um, $350 million of assets under management. Um, in the marketplace. So that's how, just, again, just highlighting how important it is to have the right team and the right people um, in your roster and your bench. Um, these days, you know, we have a fund. So we do everything. We find the deals, we raise the capital and we execute the business plan. So we run the property and manage the manager afterwards. And right now we're just working on um, our biggest fund, a hundred million dollar fund. Um, and raising capital for that right now. So that's a, a big chunk of the work that's happening. And what, what kind of real estate do you guys specialize in? You know, is it multifamily? Uh, is it, you know, self-storage, mobile home parks? And, and where? Where, where are yeah. you guys? Yeah, 100% multifamily. 99% of our properties are in Arizona. We do have one in Arlington, Texas. Okay. But we choose to focus on one market, Phoenix and Tucson MSAs in Arizona. Um, and that's where all of, most of our properties are. Um, traditional multifamily value adds. So we're not buying the brand new buildings or like the super old ones. We buy middle of the road, working class, class B properties in good neighborhoods, good schools, and they just need a little TLC. So we'll go in and we'll renovate, improve the exterior, make it nicer, cleaner, safer. And that's how we drive value for the property and our investors. Okay. No, that makes perfect sense. And if people are interested in either investing with you or in learning from you, uh, yeah. how can they connect with you? 
Awesome. We are um, on all social media platforms. Vertical Street Ventures is the name. Or you can visit our website, verticalstreetventures.com, and our contact info is on there. I love talking about real estate. So just send me an email, shoot me a note. I'm happy to connect with you and just connect and share and see how I can add value. Yeah. And Jenny, I understand that you also teach people how to become sponsors, right? Like I'm paying forward, you know, what, what you learned from your mentor yeah, uh, to yeah, get I mean, into multifamily. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about VSV Academy. I wish I learned this 20 years ago. Right. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's just one way that we try to reach back and pull forward is we did uh, launch an academy. We teach other people how to be syndicators. And so we have various tiers of the program. So if you're interested in learning more, you can, again, uh, visit the website or go to vsvacademy.com to learn more and see if it's the right fit for you. Oh, that sounds great. And we'll include links to both Vertical Street uh, Ventures and vsvacademy.com in the in the comments here. Uh, Jenny, any final thoughts or, or parting pieces of advice for audience members, how to reach financial independence, retire early, uh, you know, get started in real estate, you know, whether single family or, or multifamily, any final pieces of advice here? Yes. Um, you know, especially if you're newer, I mean, I'm sure you're listening to podcasts like this one and going to meetups and reading books. I would just encourage everybody to just take action. So don't get into the analysis paralysis that a lot of us get into. Figure out what your goals are, get laser focused, find a mentor, and then just take action and get that one deal done because the first one comes and then you'll see it just starts to snowball. So just do your best to just get that first foot in the door, that deal done, and then you'll be well on your way. I love that. And, you know, I'm a big believer that action brings clarity, you know, yeah. that, you know, if you sit there, you know, just biting your fingernails, nothing is going to happen and you're not going to get any clarity on what needs to happen either. But as you start moving, you will get clarity on, you know, what the next step has to be. And then the next step after that, 100%. So I love that. Denny, thank you so much for joining us today. This was a lot of fun. Likewise. I had a blast. Thank you for having me, Brian. Absolutely. So you guys, we will see you next Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Reach out, support us, sparkrunnel.com. And please, if you enjoy these conversations that we have on the Live Off Friends podcast, leave some positive ratings and positive love out there for us on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen. And we will catch you on the flip side.